Don't, don't you run from me. Don't you run from me, lizard. So what we're doing right now is looking for lizards. And in this area, I've seen um, the different spiny lizards, so yarrow spiny lizard and the striped plateau lizard. I've also seen the ornate tree lizard as well as alligator lizards. And you're likely to find all of them in these different types of microhabitats here. So the alligator lizards, they like this um, debris this leaf litter, that's what they like to hang out in. You can find spiny lizards sunbathing on rocks and fallen logs and things like that, but right now there's no sun because we're in the middle of monsoon season and there's actually a flash flood warning for today. So I'm not surprised that I'm not seeing a whole lot of lizards right now. And then of course the tree lizards like to hang out on the trees, but that's not the only place that you'll find them. Sometimes you'll see them basking on rocks right around trees and then when you come around, then they dart up the tree before you can even really get to them. So we found a striped plateau lizard, Slappers regatus. Yay to finding a lizard! So what I would do normally is take a picture of the lizard right where it is and that would be my find that lizard picture and I would try to get different angles so that way I could, you know, adjust the difficulty level of the find that lizard challenge. And after that, I try to catch the lizard. So let's see if I can get this bad boy or girl. Could be either one. So what I'm using to catch this lizard is a fishing pole with a lasso. Traditionally, this um, technique was called noosing, but uh, as a black person in a predominantly white field, when a whole bunch of white people go around talking about noosing things, it kind of is a little unsettling. So I thought that a good change to that would be lasso. It just has a nicer you know, overtone to it. It just it doesn't have those those nasty connotations of where noosing is kind of a negative and lassoing is more of a positive thing. And also, I don't want you to think of it as we're hurting the lizards because they're not injured by this. They're just not necessarily happy about being caught. As you can see, I am holding it by its thigh, the inner thigh, and that's how you want to hold a lizard so you don't hurt it if it tries to, you know, squirm and move away. You have a nice um, firm grip, but you're not squishing it. You don't want, you know, to break the lizard's leg off. You also don't want to really hold it too much by its abdomen because um, it's like it has all its internal organs in there and it's nice and squishy and easily squished. You don't want to hold it by its tail because it can break its tail off at different vertebrae and that is an escape mechanism from predators and it takes a lot of energy to regrow that tail and it's kind of a traumatic process to uh, break the tail. Although that most lizards that lose their tail will be just fine and are able to continue living life. So what do I do with the lizard when I have it? I do a lot of things. I wanna know how big this lizard is. So I take my ruler and I flatten the lizard out a little bit. Oops, he does not wanna be eaten today. They do have teeth, they don't really hurt. It's just kind of a pinch. It's just kind of a like a, ooh, you bit me. All right, that is just fine. So I have him on my ruler now. And so I wanna know his snout vent link. So essentially from the tip of his nose to his cloaca, and then from the cloaca to the end of the tail. I write all the information I take down in my right in the rain notebook. I also want to know his mass, but I don't have my spring scale with me, but normally I will take their mass measurements. Then I'd have a little paint marker, and this comes off with each shed. It's non-toxic. They're perfectly fine. I'd give them a number right there on this little back. I want to know what sex it is. 
and I'll include a picture um, of what I'm about to describe. So in order to sex the lizard, you can look at their post-anal scales. So males will have two enlarged post-anal scales and those are covering their hemipenes. So they have a penis on either side corresponding with each post-anal scale. So depending on what side of the female they're on, they don't need to readjust to be able to mate. Um, this one has mites outside of its mite pocket. I should take a picture of that. Uh, that's interesting. I take note of if it's shedding or not. Uh, this one isn't, and it doesn't look like it's about to shed anytime soon. Uh, they get a double. Uh, you can kind of see this, the new scales underneath the old scales when they're about to shed. And then I also need a fecal sample for the lizards. So in order to get the fecal sample, I use this little piece of foam floaty. I put the lizard on the inside, and then I gently place pressure on its abdomen. And most of the time, I am able to achieve a fecal sample in this way. Sometimes they just poop on you because you're holding them, so you don't even need to do this. But um, other times you gotta give them a little bit more encouragement. And once I have all the information that I need, I go ahead and let these bad boys go. So at the end of my lasso, there's a little string and I can just tug on the string to open the lasso and then he's off. And sometimes when I let him go, that's also another great way to get a good find that lizard photo. Hey y'all, thanks for watching my video and don't forget to subscribe. Hey y'all, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoy. If you want more content, just click that subscribe button. It's right here next to the swirl. Subscribe, click the button. You, yes, that button, click it.